Hello Pilots, welcome back to Motion RC Live. It is Friday, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, and we are here for what should be a fun show. Today, we're gonna to be talking with George Baker and Steve Hodges, two close friends of Motion RC, and also now becoming very experienced on the scale heli side of things. It's not just about planes and jets for these two. Uh, over the past year or so, they've acquired um, some Roban helis, some other scale helis, and they really learn how to get these things set up, get them flying, and have been to a bunch of events now, and you know, just joining another great community in the RC hobby. Now, with our live show, guys, we always like to do a community go around where we show pictures, but this week, if you guys saw last night, I finally, in Motion RC, we finally did our video on the new FAA proposed rule that's coming up, so I just wanted to further reiterate on this episode, um, you know, not the imperativeness, I guess, but get out there, make your comments heard. You know, the FAA proposed rule is has a few things in it that could just affect the way we enjoy our hobby uh, as is, you know, as going. I don't think it's a, it's a killer if things happen. Obviously, many things can change. These are only proposed rules to begin with, but it's best to make yourself heard. The one thing I don't like what I saw after making our video and I've seen it happen on other videos. A, there's no one to blame here. There's no reason to even get into those conversations. It doesn't matter at this point. There is a proposed rule up on the table. So we all need to band together and fight for what we need to fight for. But the worst thing is I see a lot of people saying it doesn't matter if I comment anyway. What does it matter? Well, that's the worst attitude I think I could ever hear um, anybody say is just the complacency on things to think it doesn't matter. Then what's the point? If you don't think it matters, then go make a comment anyway, because if it doesn't matter, we'll all find out. But it's better to have the comment there than to not have the comment there. So I just want to let you guys know two weeks from Monday is that deadline. I know people had said they're trying to get an extension on that comment period, but who knows if that's going to be the case. But pretend the deadline is an hour from now. Go do it. It takes about a minute. It takes five minutes, however long you want to write. You don't have to write an essay. You don't have to write a novella. You just have to say your piece, you know, and I think some of the things in this proposed rule are rough on the hobby. You know, the idea, especially with the flying fields, how there might not be new flying fields be able to be created. That's just, that doesn't make any sense. That sounds like Rich Baker said in his video, that sounds exclusive, not inclusive. If anything, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I drive around, I see a lot of empty parks lately where no kids are out playing, nobody's doing it. I'm like, I could be flying an RC airplane in there and we should be. There should be more fields. There should be more ways to get involved with the hobby. So if there's one thing we can get you guys to do today, tomorrow, and before March 2nd, 2020, is just go make your comment. Make your comment, make it heard. It doesn't have to be long, it doesn't have to be short, and I'll stop talking about it now. So again, guys, today I don't have actually any Roban helis because I am not a heli expert. I see we have Alpha in the, uh, in the chat, and I would love to get started um, with a big heli eventually in my time. And I have worked with some of those smaller 450 helis that uh, have come out. And I've definitely played with the little XK ones that we have. And helis are fun and they have their place. But it's always amazing when we, whether we go to Joe Nall, like Alex will even say, or Jolly Good Flying, you see the planes, the planes are awesome. When you see a guy come out there, one of these Roban helis, especially the bigger ones, the 700s and the 800s, it's always so darn impressive, and it's one of those things that hopefully, in my future growing through RC, it's one of those types of things, at least for me, I'd like to have just one really nice one to go around. So George and Steve, if they are there, we're going to bring them in. We're going to go into the hangar of Tired Iron, uh, Tired Iron Aviation. If you've ever seen this place, we've done a lot of videos from here, and uh, George and Steve, are joining us now. There's Steve on the left and George, the ugly one in the on the right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, George, just kidding. It's all right. <laughs> but say hello to everybody, guys. Hey, hello, guys. hello, hello. Glad to be with you here today. We're uh, we've got the um, the Roban Bell Jet Ranger out here, and uh, just out of the box, very well packed. Just a beautiful helicopter. Yeah, before we get into that, I will, uh, let me give a little preface to what we're going to talk about today. Because you have a couple other helis. Did we lose George? Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. you're there. He's yeah. there. Um, you know, we have a couple other helis that you have already put together. So what we have today, we sent out George. He's going to be helping us get some media on these things. That's one of the things I wanted to let 
everybody know. If you own Roban helis, if you know guys who do, we are on the hunt for better pictures of these things on our websites. They are not easy. It is a small niche, nichier market, so you don't see them as often. Um, but you see a lot of our web pages have pictures of real ones. Um, it's tough to get really nice crisp pictures. So we have been on the hunt. If you know anyone who has them, if if anyone owns one of these and would happily, we would more than happily compensate for them, please email us at marketing at motionrc.com uh, after this video or if you see this video. And we'd love to talk to you about possibly just helping us boost the way these things look because it's, it's, it's hard to see like this... Uh, 206 he has on the table um you know we only have the white box pictures on the website we we send out here because we can't wait to film it see it fly i've never seen one of these fly on a social media video before or at an event so that's sort of what we're doing um george and steve are going to help us out with and we're looking for other people to help us out too so i just wanted to say that but today he's got this one and this is a kit so there's a bunch of different options of roban on our website whether it's kit or arf and um, for you guys to know, almost ready to fly, very similar to how planes work. You know, the ARF is gonna come with a lot of the electronics already, but this is just a kit uh, of a 700 heli. So back to you guys, George is taking in some nice close-ups for us, but it looks gorgeous. I love the patrioticness of it. So uh, again, tell us what you see coming out of the kit and such, and uh, you know, talk about how it's packaged, things like that. All right. Yeah, out of the box, the uh, the boxes are, are actually double thickness cardboard, and it's in two of those. So uh, both both of these, and I think we've got four here today that we've taken out of the box new, and so far none of them have had even a blemish on them. Um, this one here, let me switch to another view. He's going to the top down. Nice. And you can see, I mean, it's just a beautiful paint job. All the uh, all the stars and stripes are cleared over. A uh, little bit of a little bit of exhaust on the uh, tips here. Nice detail. But uh, I, I was looking at the uh, the infrastructure in here where where your <laughs> 700 bolts into. It's it's really robust. It's um, it's pretty heavy duty. And what I like about these, you know, you can put this together relatively easy if you've got a, just a regular T-Rex 700E. And you can fly it like it is. Of course, you put the winds and everything on it. And it's got um, a detail package here that's got a few little pieces in it. It's got, um, got your antennas and your wire cutters. But... It presents really well just like it is, or, you know, you can just go crazy and put a nice scale cockpit in it and pilot figures and all that. I do like that it's got this one-piece landing gear, very strong. Yeah, it's very interesting to me, honestly, seeing it on the table. I didn't realize just how little comes in, you know, one of these bigger kits, you know, with the heli. Obviously, a majority of the heli, because I noticed just from Go, a lot of people won't even fit their body over their heli until they get it dialed in right until they fly it right. then you insert everything inside this this is just like this is like clothes for your internals <laughs> yeah there's your your whole length it's a good but size you, yeah you just drill your holes for your skids there on the bottom after you line that up and it comes with all the all the screws all the hardware Okay, now with something but, like uh, this too, George, you can. There are many different seven. Most seven hundred size internals will fit in a body like this, or is there anything specific that won't work in something like this? Well, I mean, it has to be kind of a for this one a straight tail. Uh, let me let me go over here and grab one of the seven uh, hundreds. One thing I noticed about it that I was impressed by is that it's got Kevlar reinforcing on the inside, um, which adds a tremendous amount of stiffness to the fiberglass. Nice. Now that would be, you know, tell us, explain to me why as a heli guy, I would really want that. If you didn't have well, that, it's, what it's either car It's maybe carbon fiber, but it, it adds stiffness to um, places where the fiberglass might be susceptible to cracking or you would think flexing. Gotcha. You think this would be really 
flimsy. And in but this open area, but it's not. Yeah, that that uh, I guess it's carbon fiber. Kevlar is a little browner looking, but it's it's just super stiff as a result of that. Uh, it's kind of like a rope almost being embedded in the resin. Oh wow, that really is nice. I love this top down shot too. Looks great to see it. So now, what are you bringing over, George? What is that? Is that what's going inside this, this one? Now this is regular, a regular T-Rex 700E. Gotcha. And I've already, I've already taken the boom supports off of it and the uh, the vertical port, uh, stabilizer, all that stuff you take off. The only thing that's still on it that we don't need are the skids and skid mounts. The rest of it, once you take that loose, will go right down in the fuselage. And um, sometimes I build them and, and fly them before I put them down in the the uh, fuselages, but sometimes I don't. I set them all up the same way with a, I used a, a brain two in most of them. But um, after, you know, after you get your squash plate good and level, the servos all square on the squash plate level, then you get the pitch and collective set up on your head. Um, you're pretty much done. And um, now does the that's, that's really what I like much about helicopters is that uh, you have uh, everything is a lot more precise gotcha you, you basically you get you get your flight controller whatever you're using put in there and get it set up once you get your servos lined up and then you make sure your swash is good and level you get the pitch and collective um, angles set like you want them it'll fly good Gotcha. I mean, now, one, got some one question I have for you. Now, if you dial in that body there, all the internals, if when you put the uh, when you put the kit over the top of that, does anything change? Do you have to make little changes to how it flies after the fact? Like CG, things like that, like those issues? The CG would be the only thing, just your battery placement. Of course, usually with the fuselage, it makes it a little, little tail heavy, but just the um, good thing about helicopters, they... They like the extra weight. I like the way they fly like that, scale helicopters. One, one thing, too, about a fuselage over mechanics like this, if you fly in a pod and boom configuration, um, it's often a little slower than when you put a, a, a fuselage over it. it. It's more aerodynamic. It'll cut through the air better. Um, so they end up being a little faster in forward flight. Okay, nice. But that's the beauty of like what I like about the scale helis because you know, I'm not – 3D helis scare the heck out of me, but I, I always appreciate seeing a great 3D pilot do that stuff, but nothing really looks the way a scale heli does, and it's not really about speed, in essence. When I was out at your field, and the couple videos we have on motion uh, were John Ellis, who I think was part of what helped George so much get uh, get into helis, was John coming out to his field. He has a couple of these row bands, and just watching it go across the mountaintops and the valleys, and just make those nice scale turns, looks like something out of a movie, is really beautiful. So I don't even think oh, yeah. inherently you're not you're not looking to fly these open throttle. You know, you're looking if you're getting a row band, it's for the beauty of it. And probably a more right. relaxing flight than most anything, right? I mean, once it's dialed in, I bet it could be a really enjoyable experience just cruising around. Well, exactly. I was just going to show you the small parts here with our handheld. Um, let me get it focused here. Let me say, Robo Dragons, I see you in the. Would be nice to see what you get between the ARF and the kit, parts wise. Yes, uh, later on in the show, we have. They're, they're going to unbox an ARF from Roban as well. Different type of Halley, right. another 700, though, but you're going to get a nice idea of what you get in the kit and what you get in the ARF. So stay tuned. We're going to do that as well. Nice. Oh, George, you drink too much coffee this morning? <laughs> Shaking. I zoomed in a little tight, <laughs> getting focused. Shaking. But, uh, nice clear windshield. And then the horizontals have a really nice paint job on them. There's your decals, your other windows. Nice. I like to use the clear um, styrene that you use for, like, um, vacuum forming. Gotcha. For the side windows it just it's a lot clearer and, and then i like to use the green tint for these two top windows here it's just got a film on it you've always the two are yeah, yours scale nuts the, the, so you got not really go. but there's your Steve there's your wire cut <laughs> and, 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 uh, Steve for sure. there's a 
tail skid wire. Then, of course, you have to glue these two uh, supports in here and then, you know, come off of those to your, to your frame for some more stabilization. I wondered what this little odd shaped piece of wood was, and it's for actually putting the, uh, the tail on the boom here. Okay. Yeah, the vertical already comes with the holes drilled in it, and you just bolt it onto that, so it's, you don't have to bolt it directly to the, uh, the boom like you would on a pod and boom. I'm impressed. But there's your 700. I'm impressed with your terminology. George, a year ago, I don't think was flying helis at all. And now look at you. Show them the table there quick. Do a little pan while you got the handheld of what else is on that table behind you. <laughs> oh, um, show everyone the hanger. There's a, this is a very 0412. Wow. And that's, a that's an OTF models 800 size UH1. And here's the uh, Roban Lakota. Lakota. He's nice. EC 145. Yep. Beautiful. Hi, Steve. Yes. Yeah, you know, it's another one. Like I was saying, you know, I've not done any modifications to it yet. Um, but, um, you know, it looks and presents fine just like it is. No decals or anything on it. But, you know, it's, it's flyable right now. But as I work on it, no, I'll just keep on flying it, and hopefully we'll get it completely finished before we crash. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I want, before I let these guys do any, uh, you know, customizations of some of these things, you got to, I want to film them as they would come out of the box first, so that anybody watching can see what it is, and then you always do the follow-up of what it can become, like, you know, Steve does that with every jet <laughs> ever. It's like, here it is stock, and then, <laughs> oh, Look at that parachute on the F4, or the air brake on the F18, or you know, it's it's always awesome. Yeah, that's why I was wanting to. Um, let me move to this other camera and show you what I was talking about. Like with Steve's, with his Apache here. You know, when he, he first got it all together and got it tuned, got it flying really smooth, and then he started really getting into detail in it and of course you can see the 3d printed dome here and it it stays it's fixed and the rubber head turns that that took quite a bit of work daryl sprayberry did the uh, machine work on the main shaft to get that to work it's just awesome i remember when steve was yeah we can go into more detail about that yeah later you on. guys can go uh, to we'll, we'll share a link in the description afterwards but rc jet dude's youtube channel he's you posted some updates there, right? On, uh, right. on the work I, I, you've done. <clears throat> yeah, I have a rather lengthy video where I document, or I kind of go through everything that I did. Gotcha. Um, there were a lot of changes to it. I bet. I bet. And then, then over here, this is a Roban 700 size MD 500 E. Yep, I've seen a lot of those. That seems to be one of the more popular models that people go for. I guess maybe. The scheme yeah. on it, or do you they fly about, better? You were asking about. You were asking about. Well, it's just a popular. I, you see a lot of yeah. them. You know, full scale, but um, you were asking about different uh, mechanics going in different ones. This one's made for a, uh, you know, a, a line T Rex 700, or I've got a uh, Synergy E7 in this one, and it it fit really really good. This is uh, this is one of Daryl Sprayberry's custom m models he does. This is a uh, Sikorsky H34. This thing is and it's, incredible. It's big as it is. It's still it's still. I don't know if you follow George. I, I think you've posted and George has a group on Facebook, Tired Iron Aviation. Definitely follow that. But this guy Daryl Sprayberry actually last year at Jolly Good Flying, he's a member of the club that helped us or maybe you might even be the president of that club that helped us put our show together and then the week thereafter they run one of the bigger scale heli events so i think that's where you picked that up right when you went to that event that weekend or you might have had it beforehand yes. but uh um, no this was actually at um this was down at uh, a local fly-in he was he was there and uh met up with john ellis gotcha the one that got yep. me he does he did videos with us. on this stuff What's crazy is so guys, but, just so you know, uh, this guy makes, makes his own molds in his in his house yeah. and you know produces it 
right on the spot. So like nothing else in the world is that helicopter right there, which is incredible. Oh, which is he? Did, he makes the mechanics and he everything. He does planes for it. too, right? Like anything. Oh yeah. I would love yeah, to get into his hangar one stuff. day just to see the production of this. Yeah. And this is a Robanish kind of uh, AH. Okay. Um, six. Six. H six. Uh, you know, attack yeah. helicopter. It's, it's, I guess it's more of an M model, but it's got a Roban head on it with T Rex mechanics. It's a six hundred size. They just look beautiful. Then, when you uh, see that many together, it's just you know, it really gives you an idea of just the presence these things have. You know, at Jolly Good Flying, like, you know, Steve had his Apache. I don't think you flew it that day. I forget. You might have you might have hovered it there. Uh, no, it was not ready to fly but yet. Chris Pry had any his. He had the Shadow or, you know, the, uh, why am I forgetting the? Airwolf. Airwolf, there you go. He had the Airwolf, what we were calling the Shadow, and it just looked so, so great. So, guys, so, that, well, that's the kit. So, you want to bring over the box for the ARF? maybe take a look we got the yes, as 350 yeah. is what they're going to be working on and somebody could correct me if i'm wrong it's the <clears throat> air zermat if i'm saying zermat wrong uh you know yell at me in the comment section but this is the 700 size scale uh arf kit so you're going to get a better idea but like as alpha said he's our uh, senior manager in the comments you know every arf kit's going to be different because they're for that specific heli so certain helis need different things just like aircraft, you know, than other ones. But this is a beautiful looking heli. It's a one of the more popular designs. I think I've even seen these out in the field. This scheme it seems like a lot of helis, and I am not a heli expert, so maybe Alpha can tell me in the comments. But it seems a lot of uh, a lot of different uh, helicopters come in this scheme. So uh, if that must be, you know, I don't know what Air Zermatt is. I didn't do my history teachings but maybe somebody in the comments can answer that question for me because i see it on a lot of on a lot of helis but that looks packaged really well that's how i would expect almost looks like a black horse the way those come yeah it's it's very reminiscent of my apache and uh thick yeah around. thick cardboard um very well packaged nothing's moving yeah, the only thing you took off was all so, the tape on top so we can get at it easier. We didn't want right, you fumbling around right. with the tape. But it is t taped right. down, and, you know, these things make it halfway around the world, and they're going to get to your doorstep looking great. I, I believe these helicopters are primarily uh, like a rescue platform. Um, Air Zermatt uh, might be the uh, service that provides... Uh, rescue services and uh oh alpha said air zermatt is a swiss operator airline okay so that makes more sense so it would make sense that they would own a bunch of different types of helis and just wrap yeah. it in their in their scheme but it's an iconic scheme as somebody who doesn't even know much about helis i've recognized that scheme So the basic contents, a couple boxes, these house the mechanics and the rotor head and such. Uh, it does have a two-part landing gear configuration. Um, get into some of this stuff. Wow. Here's the blades. Nice, everything package up so nicely so again see with the with the kit you're not getting blades you're not getting you know any of these so all these extra parts <clears throat> come so nice hey laurie looks a... like the boozers have joined the uh get wesley a, a a wrench for him on it toss him a wrench before he gets mad at me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so we've got so if you're just joining us, White blades, we are unboxing a 700 ARF uh, AS350 Air Zermatt from Roban. And George and Steve are here, George Baker and Steve Hodges of Tired Iron Aviation. You've probably seen them on social, definitely seen them at events if you've come to with Motion because they help us out a lot with that. And uh, 
all over social media and the forums. Of course, they are moderators on Hobby Squawk as well. So they help keep everyone in line and help get people answers. And just recently in the past year or so, well, Steve refound his love of helis. He used to be a heli guy back in the day day. And George sort of fell in love with them and starting from scratch. And now a year later, he just showed, you have to go back and watch the replay. He showed his entire hangar of how many helis he has now. He got the itch, let's just say that. <laughs> this, Steve, this, Steve is actually a uh, national champion helicopter pilot. Uh, was. From what, 97? 1990. 1990, 1990. yeah, it was a while back. Yeah, that's before, that was before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> That's gorgeous, Steve. That's a. This is the first time I've laid eyes on this, and I am thoroughly impressed. Even the inside of it. Can you see the inside of that? Uh, you gotta hold it a little Front down, overhead, yeah. maybe. There you go. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Wow. I mean, all the bulkhead. There's a bulkhead in the back of it, already in place. Oh wow. Um, and it looks and like that the they paint the platform inside of it. Is that wood on the inside that's painted? Yeah. Yeah, it's painted gray. Oh, that's great. So then, the, so the kit Better of, shot. The, of the two oh oh yeah, that's great. The kit of the uh, two oh so we've got of the two oh six. You know, it's not just wood. It's not super super detailed, but at the same time, this is more detailed than your average <laughs> um, average rig. And there's a dash. Oh, nice instrument cluster. And uh, more seats, a lot more seats. So. These are great. I mean, this is this like is really slick. Showing you why the price is so much on them. They put a lot of work in these things. You know, it's a look lot what a nice head here. This probably head. Can you compare? Because really nice. since they're both seven hundreds, George, could you just hold up the other fuselage from the kit next to that one, just to get an idea of the size difference? Yeah. Honestly, again, as a non-heli guy, I don't know real the main difference between an AS350 and a 206. So scale-wise, maybe one would be, would probably have to be. Like, I don't know if they're the same scale. Maybe Alpha can tell me, but, you know, but either way. We're pretty close, I would think. But even like the real helicopters, you know how, like, 700 size. It's like with planes, like T-30, you know, sometimes the same 280 millimeter jets, one's 10th scale, one's 8th scale, one's 14th scale, just based on... The real aircraft. Oh, Boozer, thanks for sharing that link. Yeah, man, if you want to be on Link Patrol, if you can, do it. That was uh, Mary Boozer got a chance to film Steve Flies Apache over at Joe Nall, where there was, I think Steve was the only one on the heli line at Joe Nall last year. But I think it's because they have a big heli event at Joe Nall about a week or two before. At Triple Tree, I should say. So that's why I said, oh, there it is. There's the... The comparison yeah about the same size but just look on the detail of the you know of the arf and you know what you're getting it's awesome i can't wait to see these next to each other these look great all finished up i'll be excited to film these this is a beautiful helicopter you i can show you the size difference between this 700 and a 600 AS350. I see Jeff's custom is in here. Hey, Jeff, wish I was better at flying them. I would have some of these. I hear that, but from what I from what I can find, it's all in the setup. Once they're set up well, I think they fly nice and easy, and you would be able to fly them pretty easily. It's really, I think the biggest setback for people getting into helis is probably just afraid of the setup on them, you know, because the worst thing about a heli, like a plane, you could take off, and if it's and if it crashes immediately, that's 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 rough. You know, it's that first probably that first spool up is a lot wider. The, you see, it's it's a it's a lot larger. Oh yeah. Now what was that a six hundred below it, or is that a seven hundred? Well, the one below it's a six hundred. Gotcha. Yeah, it's it's a you could. So imagine. I mean, it's a good. The eight hundred. It's a version. good two inch wider, and uh, yeah, quite a bit, quite a bit larger. I like that exhaust on it. Looks really beautiful. It looks like they have some detail. Yeah, the exhaust on the back, really nice. Do they have any wet? No weathering or anything. Yeah. At the top, like from what I'm seeing there, like where the white meets heads towards the exhaust, or is that? Just... It's a little bit of a, a blending between the white and the gotcha. red. Just a. 
a very soft blending. There's rivet detail on it, um, panel lines. Hold on, I'll get the close-up. Um, the boom has got a lot of rivet detail on it as well. Let me show you that. Looks very nice. You have to get that papa dotted. <laughs> That's basically how it would look. Wow. Very nice. Wow. I can't wait to come down there and fly it. So the plan is once these guys get these together, Alex and I are going to... Up there. Up there. I forgot. Them. There. Oh, yeah. I live south of them now. <laughs> oh, man. I, I still forget that. I've been here for almost two years. So Alex and I are going to drive up there probably before Null. I'm thinking sometime in March or April. And we're just going to spend a day or two filming, getting pictures of all these helis that you're seeing today. Once I get them all the together horizontal stack. and ready to go. So look out for those in the future. And we'll probably be doing a live show. If Alex and I come up, we'd probably do the live show direct from Tired Iron Aviation. Which is awesome. Just looking at the hardware, it looks very reminiscent of the Apache kit. Um, all the lighting harnesses, stabs, all the hardware. Everything is compartmentalized in blisters so that you know, um, as you build, it kind of goes along with the flow of it. Gotcha. Everything and, and everything that's used. I, I noticed that with like Black Horse, like every bag, if you're when you're working on a section, everything for that section is in one place so you don't have to open everything you can open it as you go which is really nice it's got a two blade tail assembly oh todd bretta joined us hey todd from seattle working hard today for motion rc thanks for coming on in the head looks like it uses the same grips as uh, the four blade and yeah they're just a different hub oh wow Nice. Very nice. I like that they're black. I have to paint a lot of the ones, you know, the uh, lime heads. Oh, they just come in the metal, like regular metal color? Right. And then... Here's the mechanics. Mechanics. I'm surprised that as much of this is put together at the, the, the printing is because... Um, when Steve built his Apache, I, I figured that the side plates of the frame would all be just individual parts, and you'd have to put it together like most helicopters, but you see... No, that's pretty much how my Apache was, too. Now, the frame is a little different. The frame on the Apache doesn't have this underneath part. Oh, wow. Right? But um, it's very, very similar. This is the this is the back end here. Yeah. Look how nice... Motor, the, motor goes right here. Look how nice will the servos mount in. Oh, nice. Motor mount. What does that weigh? Just picking it up. What do you think? That just that control is a light. Well, um, you don't pound, have to weigh it. Just could, you know, pound and a half. Pound and a half. Yeah, it maybe. looks solid. It's just you know, I never, yeah. I never held one of those before. <laughs> yeah, the frames are carbon fiber, and then this top plate is all aluminum, and the the servo mounts are aluminum, and a lot of the cross members are carbon fiber. Oh, beautiful. Um. The, bo the boom grip is aluminum. Um, nice. It's a belt drive system. There's a lot of extra gears, so the gear ratio ends up working out 13.487 um, or 847, I can't remember. Um, a lot of resin parts. The seats are resin. The instrument cluster is resin. Now, the Apache has a nice advantage in that it has light-up instrument clusters on it. It's, that was kind of neat. Came right out of the box like that. Just plug it in. See, on the RFs, you have a little, you have a little bit more detail on the super scales. You see how you've got your rivets on the, the wire cutters here? I don't know if you can tell that detail. But the, uh, the Bell Ranger doesn't have that detail. It's, it's got some nice panel lines and detail, but it's just not as much as the super scale. Gotcha. And then, of course antennas and everything your yokes they've even got the buttons on them pretty pretty nice detail on that and here's the horizontals oh yeah they're really nice very very nice paint work on these and now do those just epoxy in or do those those get screwed in the horizontals there may be a spar Maybe a spar. There okay. may be a spar that connects them. Because I remembered on um, Zoom Out, George. I don't know what that is. Yeah. That camera went haywire. Yeah. 
But uh, <laughs> I just remembered on the to, on the rotor scale to, ones. It comes it comes with a boom and a torque tube. Gotcha. That mounts to the mechanics, and that surprise provides all the support for the the tail rotor. And um, you can hear it, the push rods and stuff inside of it rattling. Not as much work with this one because it is a straight boom. Some Where? pretty cool looking detail for the struts, the landing gear. Yeah, that's just, isn't that neat? Yeah. Your uh, landing gear tubes just go right through there. That bolts on the front of the skid. Yeah. Uh, really we go to the overhead. Now, how long do you think it takes Very to put something kit. like this together? Like, if you were to just sit there a couple nights, I mean, what do you what do you envision oh. the amount of work it takes to get this going? Probably one night just putting it together. Then, you know, the real parts configuring the fly fly barless controller and uh, getting the head, getting all of your pitch and collective angles set right. And um, that that probably take just about as long as as actually putting it together. There's a few holes to drill, but of course the horizontals, you know, having to make sure they're fit good, they fit like a glove. But um, you know, they're probably they probably recommend to epoxy epoxy them in. What I did on the um, what I did on the Lakota was I. Uh, let me get my other camera here. I made a, I used some spars and, uh, bear with me guys. Yeah, it's okay. Hey, shooting off the hip, baby. It's all good. Yeah. And anytime we get to see But I made a spar system to go through it so I can actually take it off. There's a little screw that goes up into the spar underneath each one of them next to the fuselage. Okay. And you can just pull pull those off instead of just gluing them on permanently. And I found that, um, you know, epoxy and CA, they're, they're so brittle when they cure, most of them, that um, on some of that stuff, it's really bad about vibrating. Yeah. I like to use the E2000 or the Goop, G-O-O-P uh, glue. It's a heavy silicone-based adhesive, and it, it really works good. Oh, nice. Any more detailed stuff you want to talk about, Steve? Um, Anything else in the parts? Nothing in particular. Um, it, it's all, it all looks very good. Of course, the canopy. It's got raised rivet detail on it. Well, yeah, you guys got mold 22 minutes to get it ready to fly because we're going to hover it right <laughs> before the show ends. <laughs> let's, let's get it going. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> no problem. No problem. No problem. Man, that looks awesome. So there you have it, guys. That's a so now you can always go back, guys. Watch you see what an average kit, you know, good representation of what a kit would be from Roban in the 700 size. You've now seen, you know, what a 700 ARF would be like, and you can obviously tell the price difference in what you're getting. I mean, the kit was virtually had nothing, but you know, but again, it was just a fuselage. You know, it's just the looks, the the meat, the yeah. heart, the brain of the of the heli is you know, now in the, um, you know, in the ARF, but even still with the ARF now, what's missing in your motor isn't in there, right? Or is the motor come in there? No, you need a motor and ESC, um, servos and some kind of a fly barless controller. Definitely. So, you know, so there's still more so, that's needed for these, but you could just see in the detail, like yeah. it's worth it. And something like this, when you you know, putting that together, and I, I can't wait. I mean, guys, anybody going to Jonal this year, you're going to see that bad boy sitting on our table, and both of them, I would think all of them are coming down there. We want to, yeah, we definitely going to be. What's the RV going to look like, George, with all these helis? Yeah, George got to figure out how to, yeah. how to bring them <laughs> yeah, on I'm down. I'm wondering about, you know, maybe we might have to change some of the paint job on it. Maybe we put a grenade launcher on the front of it or something. <laughs> a bomber RV. But, uh, yeah. Well, I think we can get plenty of helicopters in. I actually got that big Sikorsky in there. Okay. And uh, have you flown that yet? That or 
I've hovered it. Down. I just changed it over. It, it had an it had a uh, barbarian demon in it, and I with all these scale helicopters, I want to have auto level that I can chicken out with. So I, I'm I'm using the brain two icon twos on everything, and um, just have one flight mode with without any auto level on it, and then a couple of different ones that do have auto level. So it just makes it look a little more scale when you're flying. You can set your banks up to be pretty extreme if you want to, but if you get in trouble, you can just let off the sticks and it'll, it will self-level itself. Uh, you can also set them up for rescue, rescue, but really I, I just use the auto level as, as rescue. Now when you say rescue, so, meaning like you can flip a switch, it'll come back? Or yeah, you can. Well, you hit a button, and, and what it'll do if, if you're just really out of sorts, it'll it'll auto level, and and you can set it to where it'll uh, have a a um, a vertical pitch set. To, I forget what they recommend, but it'll uh, you know it'll it'll climb if it's heading towards the ground, it'll climb up a little oh, bit. Oh, gotcha. So okay. But I just use I just use the auto level basically as my rescue. See, that seems like with a scale heli, I don't see why you would want to fly without it if the technology existed. Like, why not fly with an auto level? You yeah. Know? I mean, obviously. Well, a lot of pilots, a lot of pilots will say you know it causes bad habits, and I can see that if you were flying 3D and and you started out flying with uh, rescue or auto level on all the time, you're basically fighting against. The helicopter without auto level, you just you nudge it to a little bit to the left, and it's going to keep going to the left until you nudge it back to the center <clears throat> or to the right a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I would just think something and, uh, this expensive that you know, why not go the extra distance to get something that's going to allow you to just make sure it stays that yeah. way for as long as possible, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> and especially some you know, I've only been flying helis for about four months now, so um, you know, I'm still still pretty intimidated by. By them, especially uh, especially the larger ones, not so much uh, worrying about the damage. I mean, that's one thing. But you know, you got these 800 blades swinging, flying around you. It's uh, it's pretty intimidating. Oh, definitely. John was a that big heck of a pilot. And... That big Shikorsky's got uh, over a thousand millimeter blades on it. Woo! With those RPMs, but yeah, being near these things when they start up, it's it's. It's definitely clenching compared to, you know, compared to Absolutely. a phony. But, uh, you know, yeah. Well, what are you, what, what's, what are they saying on the, the feed there? What would people like to see now? We've got. Um, yeah, guys, he has a couple other helis he could bring out. I mean, like, if you want to walk around the Lakota, you have that there, or even. Yeah, let's move some of this we stuff We could check off, out Steve. Steve's Apache. Hell, if you want to bring over Sprayberry's big one, I mean. That's unlike anything anybody's going to see ever, and who wouldn't want to see that? But it's just incredible. So, George, while you're while you're doing this, just talk to us, obviously, again, as I said, you a year ago, you weren't even flying. What really got, what gave you the itch? Well, I was down at, uh, I was coming back from camping. We were in the Bomber RV, and I thought, well, I'll stop by the Cherokee uh, Flyers Club down in Morristown. That's, that's pretty much my home AMA club now. But um, we we went down there and uh, stopped in, Spanky and I, and uh, John John Ellis was there, and he had the Roban 800 size, um, big four blade uh, military, people would call it Yui. Yeah, the, great the one, one that I filmed that and, we could show. Uh... Yeah, he had that, he had uh, a big 500, uh, MD500, that 700 size. I actually got it from him. That's the first helicopter I got, other than uh, the little rotor scale Yui. But uh, yeah, he showed up with all those. He had the 407 with him. I think he might have had. He had something else. I can't remember. It might have been a 222. But but I saw all of these nice scale helicopters in the back of his truck and. I've been around our 3D guys here, Craig Quillen and John Coyle. Both of those guys have been so helpful to Steve and I as we've been learning about these helicopters. But uh, so, uh, you know, after that, I just like, man, I'd really like to have one. And he said, well, I, I can, I can part with that MD 500, the big black one. So I, I traded him out of it, and 
then a few weeks later, they, they had a fly-in down there, and that's when Daryl Sprayberry showed up with that big Sikorsky. He, he had several large helicopters. And I was over there just doing and on about it. He says, well, it is for sale. So between what we could scrape up between me and... What this over there? Yeah. Between me and PayPal, we, uh, we got it. So, yeah, I'm not, just barely being able to fly a helicopter, buy one that's about seven feet long. And, um, but you know, we can grow into it. Definitely. This is the- It's uh, exciting. Now we can come Lakota. back to the Lakota on the table. Yeah, it's a UH-72 or EC-145. And um, you can see I haven't put the side windows in it, but but it's 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 basically ready to fly. It's got the brain two in it. Um, it's not got as much detail as the one that's the civilian version, but really these are just kind of a, a canvas for whatever you want to do with it scale. You could fly it like it is. It's still a fi fantastic looking helicopter, and um, I think the way that basically one looks. uses. And this was just uh, this is just the. Uh, the fuselage kit. This is not a, an ARF. Okay. I put All right. a. Uh, so you just got the kit. The this same has got as a six hundred. It's got a. Right. It's got a T Rex, um, six hundred E in it, and of course the the fuselage comes. You can look on the web page and see the the parts pictures. But it comes with the race tail kit. It comes with your boom, um, all the tail gears, uh, all of that stuff. It comes with. And I just had to, I had the 600E and had to buy a Roban head, which I really like these Roban heads. I like the way the J arms come down. You don't have to use a, a swash driver on them. And uh, I put a 6,000 milliamp <clears throat> six cell battery in it to, um, to get it CG good. But um, it's really, there's a lot of room in here. You just basically pull the whole front section off and you can see from right here forward, that's all you can put your cockpit in there, your batteries, uh, pilot figures. It's got a whole lot of room, and I'll probably 3D print me a, a cockpit for it and hide the battery with the seats. But uh, for right now, we're just going to fly it and have fun with it. We should have this down at Jonal. And... Um, of course, Steve's Apache will bring it over here. But is there anything else you want to see about this one? It. Uh... What What are some of your plans for customizing it once you get to that point? What are you going to do to it? Well, right now the the U.S. military are not using this as an attack helicopter, as I understand it today. It's more of a support and I guess medevac chopper. But uh, I'd really like to have some guns on. It. You can't blow something <laughs> Put them on anyway. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> you know, paint it green and put guns on it. That's that's kind of my thing. So yeah, I think that needs a you got to just make that tired iron uh, mascot heli. That would probably yeah. be the way to go. Yeah, we ripped it off from the National Guard and went crazy. Oh, I see Fast Phil. If you're up in Lacey, Washington, saying there's a heli scale palooza in July. Hot start heli field, robans, turbines, there you go. buckets all weekend. <laughs> Thank you so much, Fast Phil, for that, guys. I can't wait to try to get to a heli show, too. Hopefully, I can join you guys, but, you know, at that time. And then this now beast, this is... I mean, this thing is incredible. So, you just transport. Obviously, you always take the blades off when you transport. Steve? Yeah, I have a, I have a tray that I built. Uh, uh, it's about the size of a door um, to securely hold this thing so it doesn't move around. And the blades come off, and they go into foam grips or holders that I have on, built onto it. So it's all contained, gotcha. but um, anyway, I also rigged it to where I can put wheels on it and I can add a handle, I could pull it around because trying to lug this thing to a flight line can be kind of a, a difficult task. It's pretty heavy. It is pretty heavy. I remember picking it, it up and great. moving it around the hangar at the Jolly Good Flying. What I love the most funny thing, yeah. one of the things I loved about it was the suspension. Like when you place it down, how it sort of just mushes into the ground, like yeah, when it takes off and lands. Yeah, it's got good suspension on it. Now, full of batteries, it would press down a little lower, yep. just about bottom out, but um, it uh, it works good like it is. 
Um, I've done so much stuff to it. Rather than just explain it, it's easier if anybody's interested just to go to my YouTube channel and uh, check out the video that I put together on this. Um, I, I went through basically everything. Um, I've added lights. I've changed the tail on it. I've added the hollow main shaft with the fixed radome mod. Um, I've, I've done some things to the gear, the springs on it. I've added articulation to the horizontal stab. Um, the pilot figures, I've added those. Uh, I did tell you earlier that it came with instruments that light up, which is a very neat uh, feature. It comes right out of the box that oh, way. A nice. um, lot of extra detail parts from a place called Fine Scale Modella. They're, they're 3D printed pieces. Uh, a lot of the parts out of the kit I used as well. Um, I also um, have a couple things that I've got on here from uh, Scale Flying DE. I did add the helical main gear most recently, and I'm, I'm right now finalizing the, the Shockwave 3 sound system on it. Oh, wow. Um, that I installed. Absolutely so gorgeous. It's, it's uh, very impressive. I mean, the way it comes apart... Everything's together for the for the cockpit and the canopy. And then I did add a battery tray that I built out of a piece of plywood and covered it with that foam grip, that shelf liner. Wing it over this way so you can see it down there, man. Just watch your cockpit. Watch that cockpit. Oh, nice. Look at that. That is a mean, mean machine. Lift it up on the uh, landing gear. Wow. wow. See here how it's got the wire cutters on the landing gear. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. So one of, one of the best detail features of this thing is um, these exhausts. I don't know of another helicopter, an Apache helicopter out there that has these more modern sugar scoop exhausts, these uh, upturned versions. Um, this is, of course, how most of the modern Apaches are being built. Um, it was intended to deflect more of the heat signature away up into the downwash so it, it gets uh, blended with the air coming off the rotors. And um, anyway, this was a, a mod created by uh, Michael Brown. Uh, he designed these around the Apache. He has the same kit and um, he, he 3D scanned it or scanned in the, the, the fuselage and then designed these things to, to fit it. And they fit perfectly. Um, he 3D printed these out of uh, ABS and uh, sent them to me as a Christmas present. <laughs> We've been kind of collaborating on our builds together, sharing notes and such. And that's just one of the great things about this community is you can, uh, you can get together with other folks and do this. Like the the drag shoot on the F4 Phantom, that was a collaboration with Paul Helms. Yeah, who's now um, selling He worked them. on the shoot, I worked on the mechanism, you yep. know. And yep. we came together on that. And I just, I love stuff like that. It's, it's always good. Definitely, so, definitely. That's the best part of this hobby and why we need people to comment on the FAA's website because community is just one of the reasons why this hobby should not be touched as it currently stands. But, uh, so make sure you get your comments in. <laughs> you going to take that out? What's yeah. in there? Okay. We've got about seven minutes here. So what's in there, George? This is another Roban. Okay. This is the uh, 500 size. The Coast Guard. Fuselage kit, yes. It's the Augusta 109. Nice. I love the Coast Guard and, uh, schemes on the helis. Something about the red, white. Yeah, me too. I and you know what? Down there at uh, the Southern Scale Challenge, when we saw the big row band, yes, seven hundred size. Um, I guess you call that a what is that? I forget which one it was, but I uh, I went to film it, and then the guy plugged in the wrong battery, or his lead burnt out. It was a Jayhawk, it was such, wasn't it? Jayhawk, yeah, it was a Jayhawk. Yeah. His uh, lead burnt out as I was going to film really... a flight review from him, and he's such a nice guy. And then that was the end of his day for that heli. Yeah. <laughs> this one. This one comes with, you know, all the, all the mounting hardware, your retracks. It, you know, it's got working retracks on it. And um, yeah, one of that, that's, that's nice. like our rotor scale version. I have it on the table above me. The, uh... Real pack. But um, then 
then of course all you got to do is just stay on that. Wow. I've got, I've got a 500 size T-Rex clone that um, okay. it's got a Copter X blade head on it. It's amazing stuff, how so. much smaller a 500 is now that you we what we after we've just seen, but a great size yeah. heli, I think, for people to uh, start with. Now, George, just one thing real quick from flying. Uh, do helis work similar to planes? Bigger, better, fl as far as flying? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. For weight. <clears throat> The size will intimidate you a little bit when you when you spin one up, especially one that you've kind of rigged up like that big 412. It was nitro for gas, and I converted it to electric. And I kind of I, I like to just try things to see if they'll work. Yeah. And sometimes it works out, sometimes it don't. So, you know, you kind of kind of get way back when you spin them up for the first time. But um, yeah, but you know, the smaller they are, the more I guess you'd say squirrely they are. We started out flying the little. Uh, when Steve got back into it and I started flying at least we, we got the little blade two thirties oh, yeah. and they they're good. You know, you can beat them up pretty good. But uh this one I should be uh, I should have a build on Hobby Squat before long and I'll get the uh updated pictures out there for the website of this. But I'm really impressed with how nice the paint job is, even on this five hundred size. And it's got some more reinforcement, see how you were talking about. Yeah, you know, carbon fiber in the bottom of it. Yeah. Yeah. The bottom is just really, really beefed up, but uh, really nice, really nice paint jobs. I mean, I just can't get over how nice that paint job is. That looks like old school lacquer or something. It's so shiny. Yeah, there's no, no orange peel or. No, no they're all coated. That's sweet. what I love about all the helis we get. They have that like nice coating on it where you don't even have to really worry. You almost hate to put decals over it. That's what you, know, yeah. you almost like. Yeah, and it does come. It, it comes with all the Coast Guard decals and everything. Yeah. Your horizontals. But uh, really nice. I probably, um, the way these uh, retracts work, they've got like hardware that goes to them. But it looks like the free wing, like for the size for like the Mirage or the BAE Hawk retracts, looks like the retract mechanism itself would be about perfect. So. Okay. My, might do some uh, experimenting after we get it together the first time for the build thread. Yeah, and guys, but, uh, be sure to yeah. check out Hobby Squawk. George, Steve, they're in those heli forms that we got there, and they'll be updating uh, as they go through this process before the eventual gratification of us finally getting to see these things fly when we get out there, me and Alex filming these and doing what we do with flight reviews. And again, as I said earlier, anybody watching, if you know anybody who has these Robans, take a look at our website. A lot of our product pages for these things aren't full of pictures. And that's just because it's very hard to find people who can A, own these and who are near people who might have a good enough camera just to get some great shots of them in the air. Like even some of the web pages we have, you know, pictures of the real thing versus what is there. So, um, you know, anything you can help, email us at marketing at motionrc.com or leave a comment on the YouTube channel or jump into Squawk. I'm sure I'll see it, and I'd love to talk to you about possibly, you know, helping us out get some of those pictures and stuff. But, George, Steve, we are about two minutes till close here, so I wanted to let you guys, uh, you know, just say a little conclusion here. Thank you both so much. Steve took the day off from work, drove an hour down to uh, George's place, but they have... George at Tired Iron Aviation, he flies in his backyard, and he's always having hangers there in Tennessee. Uh, hangar days, he calls them. Uh, Fly-ins, if you will. And anyone could go there and fly anything at his place. Just watch out for those power lines. Right, guys? <laughs> We've all... You and guys, if you're, and if you're, if you're on, the, on the fence about getting into helis, I tell you, I, I love them. I, I like the, uh, the building of them, the mechanics of them, the... The software part of them. Um, don't be intimidated by them. They're uh, they're really really fun. I, I've got uh, I've got kind of carried away with it. But, <laughs> kind of just uh, a I little really bit. Like just a little bit. Well, what I'm gonna do next yeah. time I meet up with you, I want you to get my my Yui. Help me get it set up so that I can at least have one that I can cruise around with. I have no fear of flying one now, especially a scale one. It's just right. the setup and making sure when it lifts off the ground that I don't just lose it. That's my that's right. my biggest fear. <laughs> yep. We can help you with that. Awesome. Well, guys. Like I said, we're a brain, 
Brain 2 Icon 2 shop right now, and uh, we're pretty pretty comfortable with those. Sweet. Well, guys, that'll about do it, I think. We're about to hit the 1 o'clock mark, and I have guaranteed myself I'm not going any more than an hour each week. I want to stick to that, be consistent before we go. So I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you again so much for showing those. We are looking forward to seeing the builds and such on Hobby Squawk, guys. And I can't wait to get out there in a month or so with Alex so that we could film these things and have some fun again once this terrible weather passes us. Because like you, we've been just getting yeah. rain upon rain upon rain upon rain. So uh, are you yeah. on me? Yeah, You're, it's, it's on me. I'm going to say goodbye, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Next week, I'm still not sure what we're going to be doing next week, but around Monday time when we... Uh, We'll let you know what's coming up. So be sure to join us every Friday at 12 p.m. for something new in the RC uh, community. And make sure you get on that FAA page and make your comment before March 2nd, 2020. So guys, that'll do it for us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alex, George, Steve, and everybody in the chat. We'll see you next time.